Hello, I'm Locke Meredith. I'd like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines where I'm very pleased to have back on the show our United States Senator David Vitter. David's going to talk to us about him running for governor and how he decided to do it. He decided that he was going to listen, learn, and then lead. He had over 380 town halls, traveled to every single parish in the state, and he's going to tell us what he learned and how he plans to run the state of Louisiana if elected. So join us on the next Legal Lines with David Vitter. Hello, I'm Locke Meredith, and I'd like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines where we're going to talk about the law and you and why it should matter to you what a law is. You know, in America, in our cities, in our states, in our federal governments, they all pass thousands, hundreds of thousands of laws, regulations every single year, and they either directly or indirectly affect you. That's why you need to know what a law is. It's an exercise of power over people, places, and things. So join us on the next Legal Lines, where knowledge is power. Welcome to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith, and I'm very pleased to have back on the show our United States Senator for the whole state of Louisiana, David Vitter. David, hey, Locke. Great it's, to be with it's you. It's so great to have Thanks you Thanks for back. the invite. Well, you know, we talked literally about this time last year yep. that you were going to run for governor. Right. You said uh, uh, you really hadn't fully jumped in, but you were beginning in this year, and, yep. and clearly you have. And you said you were going to listen, learn, right. and then lead. Yep. So how, how's it going? It's going great. Uh, I'm very excited about it. I, I did want to start early, back then, even before we right. talked, to really travel the state and listen and gather ideas. Uh, this isn't a one-person job. This is a team effort. And so I've been listening hard all around the state on all the key challenges we face. In fact, one way I organize that is we held 12 leadership forums all around the state. Each At the time one, you said five. So yeah, you, we expanded you it. Yeah, wow. we expanded it. We started with five and then had to go further. Uh, each leadership forum was about a key challenge that we faced, like higher ed or K through 12 education. Each one involved about 25 key citizens and experts on that topic. Closed door because I wanted to really hear people's gut honest ideas Brutal. and reaction and opinion. <laughs> Yeah, a good, bad, or in the middle without sort of the press having them hold back. Interesting. And um, it was very, very productive, really helped uh, collect some great ideas. Uh, and so I did listen hard through that process, through other meetings. I did learn a lot. And now we're putting a plan out which is really the best of those ideas on all of our key challenges. You the said, plan, David, I, sure. I want to point out when we did that show that, yeah. that at that time you had done 365 town oh, hall yeah. meetings. Yeah. I think I read recently it right. turned into 380. Yeah. And you weren't just listening to these people who sure. are the experts, sure. but you were traveling all over to all parishes. Yeah, that's what I've always done, as you know. I've always done town halls to, to reach out to folks and, and to listen. You can't represent them right. unless you really know where they're coming coming from uh, in, in their mind, in their heart, where they want you to focus on key issues and key challenges. So I've always done those town halls, 387 and counting in every parish of the state. Also do telephone town halls so that when I'm stuck in Washington voting, uh, I usually do two telephone town halls a week and that's very convenient for folks to participate in from their home. And so I assume what you heard from the lay folks yeah. pretty much was exactly the issues that you decided you were focusing on yeah, with, with these experts. Yeah, our key challenges, uh, stabilizing the budget through real spending reforms and tax reform. We need to do that first to set the table for everything else. Higher ed, you know, stop this death by a thousand cuts and stabilize higher ed. Traffic congestion and infrastructure. Right. Everybody in this area in Baton Rouge knows what that's about, unfortunately, with the bridge and just east of the bridge, the turn and congestion everywhere we need a far better system of roads and highways and bridges too a oh lot yeah of the, everything's kind of not been yep. been kept up to speed yep. here lately yep. i actually had uh, the port authority on the greater baton rouge right. port authority folks right. and they were talking about oh, yeah. the the needs of the area right. so that's obviously something you focus on in yeah. my head um your plan kind of has it, I've organized it where you've decided you're going to help people provide for yeah. themselves yeah. and then you're going to protect them. Let's talk about how you're going to help them right. provide. You talked about the budget and stabilizing right. it. Right. What are the specific? Well, you know, the, the role of government isn't to do everything for people. It's to create an environment exactly. where people can pursue their dreams and Capitalism. prosper. Right. Absolutely. And, and make the economy grow. So that's the key. In Louisiana, we haven't been doing that well 
because of a very unstable budget situation. In fact, and we got downgraded, right? Yep, Our absolutely. state treasurer, yeah. Kennedy, Yeah, said. that led to the downgrading of bond ratings and everything else. So we need to stabilize that situation through real spending reform, setting priorities, cu cutting some programs and areas of the budget that we simply can't afford or that are outright wasteful or fraudulent. And also tax reform, Look at all these credits and exemptions right. and deductions, deciding what uh, is good for the taxpayer and helps spur the economy and what does not. Well, so that was one of the key first challenges we had a chapter in my plan about. So, so as far as taxes, do you plan on increasing them or you're going to reshuffle them so that they are, are best used in the most efficient Yeah, I don't want to manner. increase any rates. Okay, I think that's we've what seen I've... too many increases. I do want to look, for instance, at these credits and exemptions and deductions and do away with some of those that are, quite frankly, just boondoggles or giveaways yeah. under a different name. And that can broaden the base. That's a lot different from increasing rates. I'd actually like to lower some rates to make us more competitive with states like Texas. And then spending, you're going you're gonna to make sure if we're spending money, it's being spent wisely and efficiently and effectively. Absolutely. And one of the issues we need to face, Locke, as you know, a lot of parts of the state budget, in fact, most parts, are protected in some way, right. either constitutionally or through other mechanisms so that we can't get at it. We can't trim those areas and do the due diligence we need to do. We need to strip away some of those protections so we have the flexibility to really go after spending we can't afford. David, let's let's point out to folks sure. that you know you have an unusual high degree of education in, in what we're talking about, not only from the practical world of being a legislator at the yeah. state level and then at the federal level, but you also are highly educated at Tulane, at Harvard, and then Oxford in England with, with extraordinary degrees in, uh, in awards. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I've been blessed with a, a great upbringing for my family, but also great educational opportunities. I think that helps me recognize how crucial for all of us education is. When your degrees were economics yeah, and law. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So boy, if we ever needed somebody with those right now, yeah. seems and, like you got and, it. And just in terms of all of our pursuits, what we want for our kids and our grandkids, education is a key. Uh, you know, perhaps our most immediate challenges are the budget and spending and taxes, but I think our biggest challenge long term as a state is dramatically improving educational Agreed. opportunities. 100%. K through 12, early childhood learning, and higher ed. And so those are two key areas uh, educa education up through 12th grade, but also higher ed that I also address in this plan we're putting together. And I saw you focusing on training, too. In other yeah. words, we're going to do education, right. but there we need technically skilled folks, too, and there's a focus Ab on that. Absolutely, and that's an area where I think we um, haven't put an appropriate focus. Skills training is crucial. You know, in America, we've let us uh, foster this idea that somehow if you don't have a, a four-year degree, you're second class. Right. And that's wrong. You know, in America, uh, college should be available to everybody, no matter what your race or background or income, but college isn't for everybody. And if you have the right skills training these days in particular, you can get a great job and a great income. And make a and lot have of a, Yeah, make money. a lot of money, have a, have a great career. These days, you can be 21 with the right skills, no college degree. You can immediately make $55,000. In four years with overtime, you can be making over $100,000. And with the boom economy in greater Baton Rouge, as well as places like Lake Charles, Southwest right. Louisiana, Sassol that's going to continue that. for some time. And they actually need workers. Absolutely. And we can't provide them, so they're yep. having to go out of the state because they can't find that's right. the properly educated folks. That's right. All right. With, and as I understand it, you're not supporting Common Core at this point. Let's discuss that on the next segment. Sure. This is Locke Meredith with Louisiana United States Senator David Vitter running for governor. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Locke Meredith, and I'd like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines where we're going to talk about the law and you and why it should matter to you what a law is. You know, in America, in our cities, in our states, in our federal governments, they all pass thousands, hundreds of thousands of laws regulations every single year, and they either directly or indirectly affect you. That's why you need to know what a law is. 
It's an exercise of power over people, places, and things. So join us on the next Legal Lines where knowledge is power. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith, and again, very pleased to have back on the show our United States Senator for the state of Louisiana, David Vitter, and he's running for governor, and he's telling us what he's going to do if he wins. So, David, you know, I know you put out, I looked at it, it's a 40-page plan, and yeah. I understand that y'all got a whole lot of yeah, chapters Yeah, it's not today. done yet. Uh, we're putting out about a chapter a week. Each chapter is about a key topic and key challenge we face as a state. The plan is called Together Louisiana Strong our blueprint for building a brighter future. It's on our website, davidvitter.com. Okay. And as I said, it's continuing to roll out on all of our key challenges. So I'd love your viewers to go there, davidvitter.com, see what they think and react. There are plenty of ways they can react through um, emails or calls or texts, whatever they'd like to do. And so this is a continuation of, I'm gonna listen, I'm yeah. gonna learn, and then I'm gonna lead. Yeah, I mean, that's how I sort of laid out my education process preparing for this race. Uh, because this is a big job. It's not one person, it has to be a team effort. And the only reason I took it on was to face these critical challenges with others, to build the team, to, to face them head on. I have a great job now in the Senate. I have a great title now. And your position, um, high position in committees, yeah, chairman? Um, I, I'm, I'm taking on this new challenge only to really take on these challenges head on and get us to a much better place on the state. And I, I really want to point out that you have absolutely pledged that this is the last public yep. office you're ever going to have. Nobody's going to be able to talk you no. into doing it again no. or to appoint no, you for the, a position. No, the very first day I announced my intention, I said straight out, uh, this is going to be my last political job, elected or appointed, period. And I really mean that, period. And that's to say I'm going to get up every morning and be a thousand percent focused on doing what's best for the state from our best and brightest to our most vulnerable. Doesn't mean I won't make mistakes. Doesn't mean we won't disagree or I won't disagree with folks on some issues. It does mean that's going to be the only focus and the only agenda to confront our big challenges head on and to get us to a much better place. You know, and let's point out also that you are one of the key reasons that in Louisiana, uh, our legislature and our governor have yeah. to relieve themselves of their positions. Yeah, term limits. Yeah, push I, the term I, limits. Yeah, I, I believe in some key political reforms starting with term limits, and that's why I championed that and authored and passed it for the state legislature when I was in the legislature. And, so, and I think it's brought new leadership, new ideas there. I think it's been positive, uh, but uh, we need it even more in Congress. That's why I'm the, the, I have the leading term limits bill in Congress. And in my head, when, when you told me that, you know, a year yeah. ago that you weren't, this was it, yeah. I go, why? And then the more I thought about it, it, I guess it in a way eliminates politics from a lot of the decisions. You don't have, yeah. to, you're not doing something because it might affect you down the road. Yeah, obviously it's, you know, it's no secret that uh, our governor has been running for president for a while. And I think a lot of people uh, think that that has colored a lot of his decisions mm -hmm. here on the ground in Louisiana. We need to have a debate about what's best for us, what's going to build a great future for our kids and grandkids. And it shouldn't matter what political pundits or leaders in Washington or Iowa or New Hampshire think. Let's talk about, because I know one of the real focuses uh, for you yeah. uh, as governor would be industry. And by that, I mean not just, uh, say, Sasol. Right. It's not picking one particular group. Right. You, you want to create an infrastructure, infrastructure that supports all businesses sure. and industries. Absolutely. But, of course, energy is probably the biggest yep. and, and greatest blessing that our state has. Absolutely. We have the resources. Yeah. How would you help our energy, ener energy industries? Yeah. Well, the good news is we have a lot of good jobs coming this way because of new American natural gas, low price, makes us more competitive, and Louisiana is a great home to a lot of that petrochemical and manufacturing industry. In that category, I think our challenge is uh, creating the skilled workforce. We need to fill those jobs. Okay. You know, those jobs that are advertised now, that list is actually longer than the list of unemployed in the state. So, so what's the problem? The nice problem, problem to have. Yeah, the problem is the disconnect. Right. The problem is the unemployed, most of them don't have the skills they need 
to step into opportunities like that. And that's so why you said education. training is absolutely critical, and that's why we have a whole chapter in the plan about skills training. That's a big limiting factor that we need to blow through to continue to grow the economy. In other parts of the energy industry, on the oil side, that slowed down because of the lowering price of oil. But there are things we can do to pick that up and to create those opportunities and in other sectors uh, to grow those opportunities all around the state. And I know the, the energy industry and the chemical industry generate yeah. a lot of revenues yeah. to the state via sure. taxes. But I also know a lot of the monies generated go to the federal government right. instead of us, and that yeah. you, you have ideas about maybe a little yeah, bit of been, fee split, so to speak. Yeah, we've been fighting that. You know, for instance, as we try to deal with coastal restoration, which is our top environmental challenge, right. part of the problem is that until recently, all of the energy revenue that was produced offshore went straight to the federal treasury. None of it stayed here in Louisiana to help us deal with those impact issues. It's nuts. Yeah, at, finally, after fighting that for literally 50 years, we passed revenue sharing a few years ago under President Bush, got that signed into law. So now uh, a third of that revenue stays in Louisiana specifically dedicated for coastal restoration and other coastal needs. That's an important start, but we need to go further on that environmental front uh, coastal restoration in particular. And David, I think we've actually discussed in previous shows that um, I think under your, your headship, certainly your support, the amount that we get may increase over time? We're, we're trying to have it increase. First of all, that's going to increase under the law that we passed. That's phasing in now. So that revenue will really start in earnest over the next couple of years. And in addition, we have Restore Act funds related to the BP disaster. Uh, and, and a BP settlement. So we're having some important pieces of the puzzle come together that we need to make sure to use in a really intelligent way uh, to turn the corner regarding coastal restoration. Then in addition, we're working in the delegation to lift the cap and go further with revenue sharing so we have more of those important funds put to good uses on our coast. And as I understand, I've talked with uh, State Senator Dan Clater and then of course, uh, uh, Congressman Garrett Graves, sure. who's worked for you yep. in, in all of yep. these areas, have pointed out that uh, kind of part of the the problem that we have because we're not receiving enough monies is that the governor or our legislature locally yeah. is spending, they're getting one-time money and yeah. spending it acting like it's going to come in yeah. every, every year and there's no way. Well, that's a perennial problem with the state budget. For several years, the governor and the legislature have been using some one-time funds to plug holes in the budget. And we need to get away from that. And certainly with regard to the coast, we can't be using those funds in particular because those need to be used purely for that coastal restoration related purposes. Okay, and you've also indicated, I know in the plan that you, you fully intend on also providing uh, protections for and encouraging the agricultural and farming yep, industries absolutely. and the shrimpers and our yep. maritime industries. Yeah, ag and uh, fishermen and all of that stuff is a key part of our economy. You know, sometimes I think we forget those traditional we elements of our economy, but we can't. And, and they're a big room uh, area for growth, too. All right, we'll continue this on the Good. last subject. This is Locke Meredith with our United States Senator, David Vedder, running for governor. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Locke Meredith, and I'd like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines where we're going to talk about you and the law. You know, a law is nothing but an exercise of power over you, people, places, or things. But where does that power come from? Where does the government get that power? And how is that power exercised? And do you play a role at all? That's what you need to know. So join us on the next Legal Lines where knowledge is power. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith again. Very pleased to have back on the show our United States Senator David Vitter. He's running for governor. He's telling us what he's going to do if he wins. David, you know, one of the areas that you briefly touched on is kind of a focus on infrastructure right. and because of all the traffic issues we oh, have. Yeah. Tell us a little more detail. Yeah, we need far better roads and highways. We're way behind. We're a decade behind, at least in terms of unmet needs. And of course, folks in Baton Rouge know that because they right. live it every day. Uh, everybody I know who lives in this area has seen their daily commute grow significantly. 
And of course, it's centered at the bridge and just right. east of the bridge, the turn, and that imp impacts the whole metro area. So we need to do better. That has to start with uh, properly spending the money that we do have and then seeing how we go further. You know, we have a state transportation trust fund from state gas taxes and other things. But like last year, only 11% of that so-called trust fund revenue went to actually building and repairing roads and bridges. The pockets got picked? Yeah, that's crazy. That should be 80, 90 plus percent. That should be virtually all of the state transportation trust fund. Instead, it's become a piggy bank to raid to pay for everything else, bureaucrats, yep. pension systems, state police. And look, I respect and support state police, but that trust fund has to go back to its original purpose so that we further our transportation well, infrastructure. I know that our local Metro Council yep. and mayor have been trying to get monies right. for, for a decade right. to help repair locally the bridges in some of the uh, thoroughfares, right. and they can't get it. Yeah, so I'm gonna start there. That's important, number one, so we do more on the, transporta on the tra transportation side. But number two, so we rebuild citizens' trust in the trust fund and trust in government because we're never gonna go right. further and do more uh, when, when they say, why am I gonna pour money into this uh, hat with a hole at, at, at the bottom, 11% going to its intended purpose. And I know you've actually focused in the plan that you're yeah. gonna do everything you can to shut down any cronyism that's yep. taken place yep. and, and the decisions are gonna be made based on merit and right. what's appropriate. Well, that's another issue that's all involved in this, particularly in Louisiana. We've had a history and a tradition, unfortunately, yep. of a lot of political corruption and cronyism. There again, we need to rebuild voter trust. And I'm gonna have a zero tolerance policy against any corruption and cronyism, really spend money the way people would spend it at home, uh, respecting that it's their hard earned money and cut out that political layer uh, to make their money go, our money go further and rebuild trust. Let's shift gears just a little bit sure. in the sense that infrastructure also includes providing protection for our citizens yeah. within the borders of Louisiana. Yeah. And we're only, only one state removed by only a yeah. hundred or a couple of hundred miles yeah. from the Mexican border. Yeah. And we've had a lot of trafficking through yeah. here, sex trafficking. We're yeah. really high. In yeah, sex like a, lot of, a lot of folks don't understand how impacted we've been by illegal immigration. In particular, the last two years, we've had these waves of new illegal minors, younger right. illegals that have been prompted because of some of the actions of President Obama at the federal level. Uh, and actually, we're one of the top 10 states in terms of where those illegal minors have been placed on an ongoing basis. So we're very, very much impacted. Meaning the, our, the, the federal government yep. is sending them to the state of Louisiana. Correct. Correct. Rather than holding them and quickly deporting them, right. which would send the message, don't make this trek. It's a lot of time and trouble for nothing. Rather than doing that, the Obama administration is actually resettling them all around the country. And not sending us money. Haul. No. We're paying for no. it. And Louisiana is one of the top 10 states affected. I didn't know In that. Public, public education alone, that's cost us last year over $10 million. And that means less money for our citizens, for their kids, for their education. It's a direct impact on Louisiana families. That's one category, public education. Obviously, emergency rooms, health care is another huge category right. and other benefit programs. And we're overwhelmed here. Yep. We just had, you know, the Baton Rouge General downtown was, yep. was shut down. And yep. so we basically got two hospitals running right. here and they're over, overrun with folks. Right. How do we secure the, the border is in terms of the Louisiana state board yeah. from this? Oh, do you support the state police? Well, I don't know yeah. what we do. Well, fundamentally, it's a federal challenge. Right. So the but feds, they kind of say you can't do the, anything. Right. The feds need to be far more aggressive about that enforcement. But certainly a governor and his top leaders can have an impact as well. One is being very uh, careful about where benefits go and how those programs are run. Things like food stamp programs, which are state administered. It's a national program, but it's state administered. Okay. Things like education and health care. So we're going to be very disciplined about that. So let's shift gears a little bit more. Yeah. And you brought it up. The hospital system is yeah. kind of uh, overwhelmed. The, yeah. the Medicaid, Medicare yeah. right. world is overwhelmed. 
how do we fix this? Yeah. Well, of course, a big transition in the last few years is our traditional charity hospital right. going to these new public-private partnerships. With LSU, Fun right? Correct. Uh, At least in here. many cases. Fundamentally, I think that's the right direction to move in. I agree. But clearly, that's a work in progress, and we need to improve that situation in many regards. Some of those partnerships need stronger partners. For instance, Shreveport is probably the situation with the weakest private partner. I think we need to revisit that, not necessarily change everything, but consider adding additional private partners with resources, with deep pockets who are going to help us recapitalize the system. And so uh, we need to perfect those public-private partnerships. David, you know, we've talked about this in previous shows, um, but I, ha I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and said, would you please thank Senator Vitter for protecting our military yeah. men and women yeah. and the bases we have in Louisiana sure. and doing what he's done yeah. with the VA, although we still got problems. Right. What do you say right. to him? Well, look, that's a fundamental obligation all of us have, right? Whether it's me serving in Congress or all of us as citizens. We can pursue our dreams. We can have a, a free life because of that service Amen. and sacrifice. So we need to start every day by thanking those folks. And we thank them not just in words, but in deeds, including the, the services they get through the VA, through other means. So that's why I've been fundamentally focused on that. And at the state level, as I hopefully transition to governor, we have a state department for veterans affairs. We need to uh, thank them in the work that that state department does as well. And you were instrumental, I'm going to toot your horn, yeah. in getting some new uh, clinics opened up, I think just recently in Lafayette and one, yeah, one elsewhere. Yeah, they're not correct? open yet, but they're finally unstuck. They're finally out of the mud, making progress in both Lafayette and Lake Charles. Those are going to be greatly expanded community-based clinics with a lot more services, a lot more specialties. Uh, we need to improve the situation in Baton Rouge. I'm very focused on that. And of course, post-Katrina, we still don't have the new VA hospital in New Orleans. We need to make sure that reopens and properly serves all of Southeast Louisiana. And you were instrumental, and, and again, I'm going to toot your horn, in getting some significant changes through Congress where it gave the VA secretary the power to fire people yeah. and also to for our military men and women to go to hospitals if they're right. not being timely treated. Right. We saw a lot of problems in those VA scandals that were uncovered a year David, ago. Thank you. Thank so you much very much, it. Locke. Very much appreciate you being on the show. Appreciate this is Locke it. Meredith with our United States Senator David Vitter. He's running for governor of Louisiana. Thank you for being with us.